Hi guys, thank you for joining me again this Tuesday evening. Um, this is the last Tuesday evening that I'm going to be with you guys. Um, we're going to be changing up the format in the coming weeks. But uh, it's been a great, I think it's been 10 weeks since, since the lockdown started around the world. And uh, well, certainly in, in Europe. And um, it's, I've been here work, I've been alive for her brain each Monday. And then obviously with you guys on Davenant Education every Tuesday. And I've really enjoyed it. I've, I've kind of developed uh, new ideas, new concepts for collections and, and just really explored um, in front of you guys in real time what the next step of my work is going to be. Um, so this evening what I'm going to do is do something that's maybe one of my favourite haircuts. It's the graduated bob haircut but I'm going to do it with a combination of scissors and razor and I'd say 90% razor, 10% scissors and the bit that I'm going to do with scissors is just a little, a little accent, a little detail that will be the last thing I do with the, with the haircut. And it's well, the reason I wanted to share this is because everyone's starting to get back in their salons now and I feel like a really quick, effective graduated bob technique with the razor is probably something that's going to be needed. Um, you know, fast techniques we're all going to have to adapt when we get back on the salon floor, but also something that can be dried naturally. And for anyone that's been watching these videos, all my haircuts have been dried naturally. I think I've blow dried one cut. Um, and that's just where my head's at at the moment. I was speaking to Anna Pachito yesterday and, and that's something that they're incorporating into their salons to, to help with the spread of, of COVID-19. They're going to be restricting blow dries, which that type of thing suits me down to the ground because I don't really, uh, if I can cut and just leave it to dry naturally as I'm working, it's my favourite a favourite way to work. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a graduated bob with a, a little detail in it. Okay. So I'm just going to quickly show you, I've cut one side of it so that I don't risk repeating myself for you guys. Uh, and I'm going to higher up a little bit so that it's above any comments so that you guys can see. So you can see I've gone in quite tight into the neck. I've created a couple of inches of graduation that gets less and less and less as it arrives at the front. This again is literally, I'm combing with a wide tooth comb, just tucking it behind the ear and letting it dry naturally. And that's, that's where... That's where my head is at with all of my haircuts now. I just want to do a really nice, structured, but still soft haircut, but left to dry naturally in this kind of more organic, soft, and, and I think quite Davenous way, really, you know, not doing, not doing too much, having quality, and then letting the quality, uh, letting the quality do the work, really. So, as I did last week, I'm gonna just concentrate on the haircut. I've got some nice music playing in the background and we're just going to have a, it's probably going to take about 20-30 minutes to do this side. So I'm, I might speak a little bit but I'm just going to really focus on what I'm doing rather than making it too step by step. Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit of day day but I'm not, you'll notice that I'm not going to wet the hair down too much for each section. I'm just literally doing it for grip because I, I want to almost see the shape develop as I'm doing it. I don't want everything to be, it's this way of almost free cutting hair where you, you, have, um, you have a technique and a structure, but it's still got like a, a relaxedness and, a, and a, an organic approach. It's, it's something that I've been developing for a while. And I think that, that's definitely the direction I'm, I'm gonna go with. Obviously you need a, a good fundamental, um, you need a good fundamental foundation of your, of your classics first. But once you have that, it's a really nice way to work. So I've taken a center part in through the back. I'm just going to section off the shorter side so I don't get mixed up. And you can probably see the graduation that we've created underneath there now. Okay, I'm going to take a diagonal section that's just off vertical, a little bit more hair. I always tend to take slightly thicker sections with when I'm using the razor than I would if I was using the scissors and that's because I like to see the shape develop in a bit more real time. Okay. Can you guys see that? I think what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to come in profile and I'm going to drop in here 
I'll pin this away a little bit more so that you guys can see the angle that I'm creating rather than just looking flat at it. So, light spritz with the day day. So, if you look, guys, look through, you can see my guide from the previous section. I'm gonna go in tight. And you can see the angle that we're creating. And if you're cutting her with a razor, if you're doing graduation with a razor, the real key with it is to not be afraid to go in tighter as you get closer to the head. A common mistake is people panic and they pull away from the head. And then obviously, of course, then you're increasing length through the perimeter rather than going in tight to the hairline. If anyone asks any questions on the feed, I'll try and answer them as I see them coming through, but if I don't, as usual, I'll go through in the comments section and answer them all a little bit later this evening. At this point, I'm going to just take a, a mirror image section on the other side to make sure that I'm building the graduation at the same rate. So I'm just going to spin around to show you the angle that I've been so I was here, and then I was here, and now I'm here. So I'm just pivoting around the head. And until I find the angle that I want this longer side of the graduated bob to be, I'll keep pivoting. And once I'm happy with the angle, then I'll keep at that angle, and then I'll start to bring everything down onto that line, just elevating each one as I go. I am gonna make this left-hand side a little bit longer, so we have um, a slightly more asymmetric shape. At this point, I'm not really worrying about the perimeter too much. It's more about the angle of the graduation and then I'll refine the perimeter line afterwards. So as I said, the reason that I'm sharing this haircut technique, it's one of my favorites, but I just think it's, it's gonna be really it's gonna be a really usable thing when we all head back into the salons. And I know a lot of you are already in the salons and I'm sure you're, you're having to adapt your work slightly to the, uh, to the new way of running things.
I'm going to switch to the scissors. I'm just going to go in with the points of them and just refine off the corner of this baseline. And that's just so that I can see clearer where my graduation line is going to blend into my perimeter and flow into the side. But of course, with this type of haircut, you re you've got to resist the temptation to go in and cut it very, very clean because then you're going to have a line that, that jars against all the softness and the movement that we're creating when using the razor. So you'll notice I'm just wetting each section as I go. <clears throat> That's because I want to see, I don't want the, the hair to be totally wet as I'm cutting. I don't want it to be wetter than it's just been shampooed. Because I want to really see the way the hair's reacting and see any little movements and any little kicks in it. Uh, and I find when it's, especially working with the razor, when it's all soaking wet, you don't start to see those details. So if you can probably see now, if I spin around, we have our graduation coming in and we're going to be following quite a steep line because I'm quite happy with the angle of the graduation now. I'm just going to bring everything down onto that line, elevating each time of course. All the time, keeping matching up on the other side make sure my graduation is balanced. I'm just going to bring you forward a little bit. So we have a question, do you cut the hair always wet? Uh, no, not at all. A lot of times I'll start scissor over comb from dry and just get the shape in. Um, a lot of times if I'm working with a razor and I want to remove weight, I'll blow dry and I don't really want to change the shape too much. I'll blow dry really straight, run through with the irons and then just slice with a brand new sharp razor to, uh, to remove bulk and weight. So no, I would definitely uh, There'd be many occasions where I would cut dry hair, and obviously at the end of every haircut, I would cut dry.
You guys can probably see that graduation line dropping through now. I've just put on this side, I just put a little flat clip because I'm a little bit bored of cutting mannequin heads, right? So, and the thing that I miss about, I won't say bored, but I'm missing cutting real hair. And the thing I miss about real hair is the little details, you know, the little kicks, the little jumps at the crown and the little nice hairlines that do unusual things because that's where a lot of, uh, I think my best ideas will come of working with someone's natural unusual character that they have to the hair. So what I've decided to do here was just add a little flat clip. I, I put it in in the garden this afternoon with a flat clip and then just, you can see, just pin that in just to create a, a fake uh, a fake little kick through the front. And I think that's gonna help with the styling and the finished result. One move, one move down. you guys can see, it's quite a quick, just flowing way of carving a graduated Bob Shapin working with the razor. Just switch into the wide teeth as I get closer to the crown area.
spin around here, we just want to do this final. What is the best and easy way to balance both sides precisely? It's a case of, as I've been doing all the way through, you kind of, so you, you go in into the haircut and every section that I take here, I'm kind of mirroring it on this side so that I, uh, I'm, I'm making sure that I'm not getting carried away with the graduation on one side and then I look and it's out of balance. So I'd take mirror, mirror sections from the previous side or potentially you could do both at the same time. You can do one section on one side and then the other section. One section, one section, so you're building up both sides uh, at the same time. Uh, do you perm hair as well? I need my bangs done up. No. <laughs> um, I haven't permed hair since I passed my perming section of my uh, NVQ, which is the qualification that we have in the UK. So I can't help you, Hazel, on that one, I'm afraid. Although I'm fairly certain it was a joke. line and then the shorter line through here so what I'm going to do is just show away now that I would cross check using the scissors so I'm going to take diagonal sections reverse so I'm going to begin here I'm going to curl everything down onto the line. Then I start to work back and just check the line and using the points of the scissors. If there's anything I feel that's a little bit too wispy that's going to not add to the perimeter shape, I'm just going to use the scissors, the very points of the scissors, in a vertical way. So I'm not coming in. I'm not coming in chipping from the side. I'm coming in vertically just to remove anything that isn't in line with the shape that I want to create. And as I get near the ear, I'll switch to go through the comb.
It's important when you are cross-checking that you're remembering the elevation that you created. You'll notice that I'm not cross-checking and pulling everything totally flat. I'm remembering that elevation so that I'm not missing anything or altering the graduation. Thank you very much, Alison. Much appreciated. Yeah, I think the chilled approach is the way to go. It's uh, Anna Pachito that I think uh, just uh, joined then. We did a, a really nice interview last night on Davenes Education Instagram. And um, we talked about that, about, you know, being, I think the words we use were, you don't have to do a show, you don't have to assist, you don't have to go on a shoot, you get to. And I think that's, while that's a lesson that both Anna and myself said that we would give to our assistants, you know, you don't have to do this, you get to do it, it's a privilege. It's important to remember that even uh, as the art director, I don't have to do this, I get to do this. And it's, and it's a case of remembering that, that, it's, that it is a privilege to, to be able to come on something like a platform like this and demonstrate your work and talk about your ideas. And it's something not to be, uh, not to be taken for granted. So I appreciate that, Alison. Okay. Let me check this line. So then I'm going to just go through where the graduation at the back meets the line at the side. I'm going to pull that down and if there's anything there or not. So you can see now, and the, basically the principle is your graduation starts like this, right? And it gets less and 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 less, and less until you arrive at the front where it's one length. And that, for anyone that maybe is less experienced with graduation and is a little bit earlier on in the career, that's the basic principle. If your finger's like more vertical, your graduation is gonna be steeper. The farther you pivot your finger around to be more horizontal, your, your graduation is gonna be less and you're getting closer to one length. So it's all in the angle of your finger and how much you wanna pivot around will dictate how steep your line is. But just remember that this, this part is the, the the most amount of graduation you'll have, and that graduation gets less, 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 and then you're one length right at the front. And that's basically graduation, really. And there's this, people can explain it to you, but there's a certain amount of feel to it. Um, so you could watch this video now, but there's, there's no substitute for getting it in your hands and just feeling when you've elevated it too much, when you've ele elevated it not enough. So, let me just have a little look. So I have a basic shape in here now. One's a little bit drier on this side. But if you remember, for anyone that, that didn't join right at the beginning, I talked about that I wanted to add a little detail. And this is something that I do with a lot of, a lot of my clients, is I try to add something to their hair that maybe uh, the hairdresser working in the next chair or the next salon or the next town or the next city wouldn't do. And the reason that I do that, let me just try and get the kinky up. So the reason that I do that is because I'm a big believer in, especially if you're all training in the same salon, everyone has similar hands. You know, some people are slightly better than others, but if you've all, say there's five of you, you've trained in the cell and you've been through that, that company's training system, then you've all got similar hands. And, and I think the way to, to build a clientele and to become busy um, is you make people pay for your mind, not for your hands. And if you can, if you can keep giving your clients a, a, a classic haircut like this, but just a little, but something that, that is unique to you, where there's a little twist and a little touch and a little bit of you in it, then straight away that person's not paying for what you're doing with these, they're paying for what you're doing with this. And that's unique to you and that person in the next chair or the next salon or the next town can't do that um, this in the same way that you can. So I think I'm just gonna show one little thing before we finish to let it dry naturally of what I would do. 
So with, uh, what I like to do with a lot of clients is do like quite a, like a classic kind of naturally wound haircut like this, but then just give them a little detail that if they want to wear it at the weekend, it's, it just gives them a little kick and a bit more interest, but it's something that can be covered over in the week. So I'm just going to do that on here. So I have quite a few clients, two ladies, Isabel and Lisa, that always come to me to just, and we do, you know, a regular like normal haircut, but then we just like to add a little bit of detail through, so at the weekend, they can just tuck it behind their ears and it just adds a little bit more, uh, just has more interest to them. So that's what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna look right on the cheekbone of what line I wanna create. I'm just seeing how that's reacting and I'm going to make that a little bit deeper. Trying to keep it out of the camera way. Let's just add a tiny bit more and just to strengthen up this area. So I'm just taking a reverse diagonal section. There we go. So it's just a little something that if this client was it work in the week? Should have this. Let me lower it down a little bit. Should have this quite natural bob, which I'm going to spray with the day day and a bit of salt spray. And I love doing graduation that dries naturally because it just. It stops that triangular shape through the back and scoops all that weight away. So I'm gonna let this quite tussled shape, so you can see that graduation come in here and then drop down through here. And I'm gonna let the same happen through both sides. And I'm gonna stick her in the garden. I'm gonna let her dry. Just naturally, it's still got a little bit of sun here this evening. So this will dry in an hour or so. And then we'll just be able to see this exaggerated shape. And what I like about that graduation is that all this triangle here that would, this area that, that scooped away, I find that when you do something like this, that shape of the neck is very, very flattering on people. So if you can, and I'm going to just, again, pin my little, uh, kick into the front of her hair, so as it dries, 
does this little jump so you can see this eye. And then through here to finish, she would just tuck it behind the ear. Let me get a comb to show you. Come a little bit closer. So she doesn't want to show it, she doesn't have to, but she tucked it behind the ear. If she had an ear on this mannequin. And then she just had this little sharp bump. And that's just a detail that I do it on, a, I've done it maybe five or six clients coming regularly to have this done. And it's just, they have, they have quite, um, you know, quite just cool commercial haircuts. But then they just have these little, little sharp lines that sit on the cheekbone. And it almost like when they tuck their hair behind their ears, and I've got one lady that has it on both. So she tucks her hair behind the ears and it gives the effect of that she's got a short little haircut and it almost gives her a taste of a short haircut but without the, without the risk and without the, uh, the nervousness that comes with it. So, in fact, I'm gonna keep this pin behind the ear while it dries. You can see here, just a nice little kick on the jaw. She has here, through there, and then we just have this nice graduated shape. Through there. Now, where did you pick up? that wide comb. I picked it up at a wholesaler's in Rimini, in Italy. We did a seminar there once, and I, uh, they had it in there, so and they, they gave it to me very kindly. So, she's going in the garden, um, and then, yeah, so I really, really appreciate each and every one of you um, watching this evening, but also watching over the last 10 weeks. It's been really great to, to get to know everyone through digitally over there, um, and I, I hope that you've that you've um, enjoyed seeing me figure out my, the next stage of my of my work. I've, I've tried to each week really push myself to not not do something that I know how to do. That I'm going through the the I'm just going through the motions of you know a technique that I've taught a million times. I I really wanted to to invite you guys in to see my thought process around the skate book that if any of you've been watching that I've been working from and and just figuring out ideas as I go. Nothing that I've done is a is a finished product, but. Uh, I think it's, it's time for me now to take these ideas and uh, really start developing them and polishing them off and, and working on them so that as this lockdown in the UK ends, I've got these ideas that are ready to, to cast some girls for and get them in front of a camera as quick as possible because I, I really want to make a collection, almost like a lockdown collection of everything that I've been working on. But uh, yeah, so I'd just like to say, I'd like to say thanks to Hairbrain for the first what, five weeks I was doing a um, lives with them on a, on a Monday evening. Uh, and I'd like to say thanks, obviously, to Daveness and all the guys at Daveness Education that have been really supportive in, uh, yeah, enabling me to come on every Tuesday and, and share my ideas with you. But most of all, obviously, to you guys, it's uh, it's obviously a really um, a really tight community, and this unusual situation that we've we've all been in has given me probably uh, more face time and, and and more opportunity to share my thoughts and ideas than than what I would have had otherwise. So I suppose it's uh, turned the negative situation into a little bit of a positive so i hope i will see you all soon and i know i will see you all soon and other than that stay cool keep out of trouble and take care of yourself see you later bye